What makes BC special for our football players is the tradition of our program. The success the program's had in the previous years, a lot of young men grow up in town, they want to be a renegade. Uh, and, and that's basically what makes us special. I had an opportunity to go to a four-year school on a scholarship, and I remember telling Coach Briggs, no way, I'm going to be a renegade. That's all I ever wanted to be. And, uh, and BC has been just really good for me, my life. The thing about it, what I've noticed now in retrospect, that I was a guy that, uh, not a great player, but I like to hang around the gym. I'd be the first guy in there. I'd be the last guy out. I'd be the guy that'd be having fun with the other guys and enjoying my time there. And I've seen that carry over to when I was coaching and everything else. I'd want to hang around and talk to the guy. That atmosphere in athletics uh, was really the thing I missed when I was away from it. Uh, Bakersfield College football is tradition. It's history. It's a community that uh, has embraced a college football program like none other. Um, and that's that was one of the huge attractions for me to come here as a as a coach. Uh, I had the obviously I had the uh, the experience of playing here as a player um, on the other side of the sidelines and then as a coach as well. So I knew a, a ton about Bakersfield College and the history and tradition. There's not many places that are like Bakersfield College. I mean, to have that stadium when it's packed, rocking and rolling, and to have everybody in our community going, hey, good luck, hey, let's go get them, hey, you're a renegade. Man, it, I mean, it really gives me the chills thinking about it, you know, because that's what Bakersfield College is. It's Bakersfield. And when you think about Bakersfield, you think about the Renegades. What's different about um, maybe the atmosphere at BC, when you think about the kids and the players that, that have come through, you know, back when I was playing and um, with Coach Bowser and Coach Dameron, you know, I, it was an honor. It was a, quite, it was a privilege to be playing up here. And, um, you know, you didn't always realize it at the time, but once you got here, you realize just how great the coaching was, how um, the atmosphere was one that was going to prepare you for the next level, and um, and I think you know that's not always understood nowadays. I don't know if the kids that come up understand that you know they're going to get prepared to move on for the next level. Going to Bakersfield College, the best one of the best decisions I've ever made. Uh, went from being down in the dumps, feeling bad about myself, and had two two great coaches uh, talk some sense into me and. Uh, made me feel good about myself, tell them, you know, why can't you show your talents to the people in Bakersfield, show them your local boy here and uh, go on and do great things. Uh, the families have grown up in this community wanting to be part of BC football and uh, they've, and it's just because of the tradition, the success of the previous years, the years uh, Bakersfield College went to Junior Rose Bowl, all the potato bowls we went to, you know, the Shrine Potato Bowls, that's passed on to their kids to be part of it. Um, you know, BC football, I think, chose that for the fact of you grew up watching it. I mean, it was something you did on Saturdays. I know my family did. It would be, we'd play basketball or whatever in the morning, and we were at BC watching that football game, and heck, I'm, I might have fell asleep a few times, you know, by halftime because I was so tired, but it didn't matter. That's what we were going to do. We were going to go watch Bakersfield College. So. When you grow up, you think, I want to do that. I mean, why not? That's where, that's where I want to go. First thing I'd tell them, if you're going to come up here and play, get ready. Get yourself ready to get here. Get yourself in great shape and be ready to go on the practice field and work really, really hard in the heat. And if you, if you can't suck it up and be tough, then you're wasting your time. You know, and when you're playing BC football, you got to have all those qualities. And one thing I really love about football in our world and our communities today is a lot of our people need to learn how to get along with other people. They don't do a good job of that. They learn that at Bakersfield College. I don't think you're a good coach because you're well liked. I think you're a good coach because you do things that are really are going to help the guy. And it's not going to help the guy to be a friend and go easy with him. That was my philosophy. Football is a, a repetition's a way of life. You try to doctor it up one way or the other and make it more, more palatable, but you're gonna have to drill. 
And if you drill, letting them do the wrong thing, you're making them worse. But some way, that repetition's a key, and uh, that you isolate motivated kids that way. I think Coach Dameron brought something to the table that I'd never seen. And I'm, what I mean by that is it's something that I still try to instill in my profession today. He coached hard, but he loved harder. And I think, I think that was one of the things that you knew when Coach Dameron crossed the line, he was a football coach. And he was an old school football coach. And he wasn't going to put up with it. He wanted it done right. And if you didn't do it right, you're going to know about it. But when he walked off that field, he put an arm around you and loved you, cared about you as a person, and I mean, just showed the human being that he was. It wasn't just about X's and O's, it was about developing young men and making us better. And I remember just this feeling of, you know, he would coach the player and then love the person. And that's really kind of what I try to do with our guys. You know, I coach the guys hard when I see when I'm with them and I'm coaching them. And then I try to love them off the field. And um, I, I demand and expect a lot out of our players. But I also know that football is not their entire life. It's just a, a small aspect. And so I want to try and, and coach the way he coached us. And, uh, and that's the biggest thing that I try to do with my coaching career too. And uh, Coach Dameron, you know, the one thing that I you recognize is the, the toughness part, you know, that they were, we had a, uh, you know, we had a sense of identity who we were, and and I and it, and it goes on until this day, you know, I talk, we talk to our players about who we represent, and it's not just the college, it's the community. It says Bakersfield across our jersey on the front side of it, and that should mean something to us. Uh, Coach D, you mean, mean a lot to me. Uh, I was going through a bad time in my life and you helped me out and something I love to do and you taught me how to be great at it and I was able to to take that and bring it out and have you know two successful seasons when I played for you and the life skills that you taught me uh, being a good dad to my kids uh, instilling that Christian taking my kids to church and teaching them about the good things, the morals, the ethics, the hard work, the hard work that it takes to be a good person. Uh, those are the things you taught me. And, uh, I really appreciate Coach Bowser was a guy that lets you coach your personality. And, and you know, there was a variety of personalities within our coaching staff, obviously. And I was a young guy. and. Um, you know, he didn't try to reel, he probably should have reeled me in a little bit, but he didn't. He let me be who I am, and I, I, I've really always appreciated that, and I've always tried to, I've tried to uh, adhere to that same principle of the coaches that coach with me, of let them be who they are as personalities, because we're all different, you know. You know, Coach Bowser was the ultimate leader. I mean, to have the staff that he had, to be around that long, and, and to lead be the leader of men that he was um, as something that I always looked at and said wow that's that's pretty impressive and I didn't I didn't really realize it when I was there until we got away is when I went man that was that was impressive how he was able to lead a kid all of our kids and our community and those that coaching staff to be able to do what we were able to do and you know to see him today and he's still that man and he never wavered from that man is something that I totally respect about Coach Bowser. Coach Bowser for me was like, when you talk about the leader of the group, I mean, I just remember the things that he would say to us after practice every day. You know, every day I felt like there was something important to be heard. And his message, you know, I always tried to listen for the message that he was giving us. And whether it was, hey, you need to stay in 12 units to be eligible, or what it looked like to be, you know, a man of integrity. You know, he took the time to um, to teach us something I felt like it at, at the end of practice every day and I'll never forget just looking around and whenever he would speak to us guys were just focused on him you know they weren't playing with their pads or playing with their shoes they would fo they were focused on him and he would demand that and I just remember admiring his leadership and and the way he led the football team and um, and he was just fun to be around he had fun at practice you never heard him yell hardly at all you never heard him go off on a guy he had fun with his players and 
and then he was able to, to, to flip that switch and be the leader that he needed to be for our team. You know, just sitting here talking together about things, I can remember things that happened here on this hill. I can remember under these trees the doggone blackbirds coming down and pecking me in the head. I can remember Coach Bowser wrestling with a fullback that bit him in the side and left a mark on his side. I can remember so many things. Some of the trees, I can remember all those linemen over there against the wall doing quarter eagles. I can remember how small these trees were. So you start to get the old guys talking about the past, but there's a tremendous number of good memories that come from that. And I think in the case of players where they have a good experience, and that's your job as a coach to give them a good memory. You're making that kind of thing for them. And I think that's all you know, that's, that's really important and I think that's key in, in changing guys. Coach Bowser was just relentless on messing with people and I remember one time he asked me to bring a Taft College coaching shirt and, and I did and plus I, at the time I was a midget compared to Coach Dameron and so he, I, I bring the shirt from home and uh, he put it in coach's locker and coach Danvers is such a focused guy you know when he he has a train of thought that's what he, he's you know tunnel vision blinders on and so you know I could see this you can visualize how this was going to happen because he just grabs stuff and puts it on and sure enough we were I don't know it was a Sunday and watching film and somebody coach Bowser was just laughing. He goes, you won't believe this. He came over, I think he got Dallas and I, because we were on the other side. And Coach Dameron, sure enough, had Taft College football shirt on and didn't know it. And it was probably three sizes too short and had it on for I don't know how long, a couple hours, you know. I think some of the best things were our, our uh, I think it would have to be when we were having our, our chalk talks. I always. I always enjoyed our time when we had chalk talks and somebody would fall asleep. Because gosh, to hear Coach Dameron go off on somebody or throw a chair across the room because some dip do fell asleep. And uh, I think it woke everybody up and kept everybody on their toes. But those were some of the fun times in our chalk talk to hear, hear those coaches get mad when somebody dozed off. Um, memories that I had as, player, as a player were um, just creating relationships with guys that you know, I say it to my players today, the guys that you couldn't stand in high school are going to become some of your best friends in, at the junior college level here at BC. And um, guys like Dave Blevins, who, you know, played at BHS, who I couldn't stand, became one of my good friends at, at BC. Uh, Chad Manning, um, all kinds of names and guys and faces that I couldn't stand in high school, but became my good friends in, in college. And well, Those are good ones. This isn't on tape, but you know the one I like the best? Remember old Vernon Chapel? Greatest cheerleader in the history of the world. He used to get him going back and forth. What makes the grass grow? Blood. What makes the grass grow? Blood. Remember that one? Oh, I love that. He would get and they'd rock that thing, man. <laughs> At the end of the day, I can honestly say that we all we are BC. It's for you. We are BC. 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 How's that? That was great. Okay. <laughs> okay.